Okay, we have our member substitution straightened out. I'm going to open the hearing for Senate Bill 202 and recognize the prime sponsor, Senator Prescott. Great, thank you very much, Senator Bates. I want to introduce the bill to you as a congressional redistricting plan uh, passed by the Senate. I hope you look favorably upon it. Thank you very much for allowing me to come before your committee. Any more to say about it? Oh, that's the briefest introduction I've heard so far. Uh, any committee members have questions? Yes, sir. Yes, I have several. Um, as I looked at this, I see that um, you have moved San Bernardino and Tilton into District 1, which seems to make all of um, Belknap County into District 1. But then after you get all of Belknap County into District 1, it looks like you moved Center Harbor out of District 1. Was there any thought of keeping the entire county together? It was great thought into this bill. And I hope you look favorably upon it. But I guess my question, if I might follow up, was you moved Sanderton and Tilton into District 1 to get all of Belknap <coughs> County there, and then you moved Center Harbor out. Was was the goal of moving Sanderton and Tilton in there to get all of Belknap County in there? Was that Why did you decide to move Sanderton and Tilton into District 1 to begin with? The goal of redistricting is to make a uh, constitutional plan and make sure that that passes constitutional muster, and that was the goal that, that we tried to accomplish, and I hope that you look favorably upon it. Another goal, last, last well, no, this is a different question, actually. Uh, another goal is to make lines that look like they're not jagged and moving in and out. It seems to be that what you've done with Campton makes a line that jots in and out up there. Um, was there any consideration? Why did you decide to do that with Campton? To make a constitutional bill, we felt as though that was a, a, a way to draw the lines. That's how it came about. I hope you look favorable upon it. I give up. Representative Brown. Yes, thank you. Uh, Senator Preston. Prescott. Prescott. Am I correct that this new plan has an actual deviation of only two citizens, plus or minus? So it's just about as perfect in terms of deviation as is possible. That is correct. Any other questions? Representative Pierce. Senator Prescott, there, um, we don't have such a law in New Hampshire, but several uh, states have laws trying to ensure objective criteria for redistricting. One of those criteria is specifically excludes uh, consideration of uh, incumbency, or what the incumbents would protect or not protect, or where their addresses are, things like that. Um, and there's been a lot in the press, I don't know this to be the case necessarily, but there's been a lot in the press that um, this plan was, I don't want to say dependent, because again, I don't have the evidence, but that it was important that the two incumbents get weighing in on the plan. Um, and I was wondering if you could speak to, to that point, is what relevance did the incumbent's uh, feeling on how the lines were drawn? Uh, what, what was the relevance of that building plan? That didn't play any, any part in my decision to vote for the bill. Um, did it play any part in, in drafting the bill? Uh, you can surmise from uh, you know, what's in the paper, a lot of things. Uh, the bill was drafted, as I mentioned before, to meet constitutionality. And that was the edict that is given to us in our Constitution. And that's what we went about and did. And uh, I voted for it because I felt it was very, very close to being exactly perfect for that constitutionality of one man, one vote. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, not that it really matters, but was, what was the vote in the Senate on this? Unfortunately, I do not recall. I apologize. Uh, I had heard, Senator, that, uh, that the vote was unanimous on the voice vote. Uh, 
Does that refresh your recollection at all? No. Conversation with uh, the two sitting congressmen mm -hmm. um, in preparation of his plan, and that was refreshing. And I wonder whether you have had conversations um, with the two congressmen in the preparation of this plan. I've had conversations with uh, both representatives my whole career as a politician. Um, the conversation concerning this exact bill, how it came out of the Senate, no, I did not. Real quick, I want to thank you, Senator Prescott. Sure. Uh, I'll be supporting this here. But uh, we did have conversations, and I know I've talked before about it on the last time, and then here recently, that there is support for this by both uh, congressional congressmen. Like I said, so it's a win win for all of us. Hmm. Any further questions? Would you? I don't see any. So. Thank you for Somebody, you or somebody should show up tomorrow at 11 o'clock and announce that the executive session is open, but that the decision is already made. Because it is <laughs> Okay. So just to be clear, there's nobody here that has any objection to the executive session here and now. Was that? to 
for I don't understand the reason go to take North Field, Northwood and Deerfield out. Um, nobody claimed it, but it seems to me that the media knows it. If we don't, that this was agreed upon by the two incumbent congressmen, I would just say, as I've said before, that we're not in business here to help any congressman or hurt any congressman. The district is not theirs. It belongs to the people of District 1 and 2. Um, conceivably, four or six or eight or even two years from now, these two congressmen will not own that seat. Somebody else will be in that seat. So I don't think that what they had to say about this has any relevance. Uh, I just feel that the House plan is infinitely better, so I will not be able to vote in favor of this. Okay, for good discussion. So the motion is up to pass on Senate Bill 302. 202. 202. I'm sorry, 202. Moved by Representative Rowe, seconded by Representative Tapler. If you are in favor of up to pass, you would vote yes. Uh, if you're opposed, you would vote no. Um, I'm going to call the names of the people that hopefully are here. Representative Tapler. Yes. Uh, Representative Baldessero for yes. Chandler. Yes. Representative Hess. Yes. Representative Rowe. Yes. Representative Valancourt votes no. Representative Ed Smith. Yes. Representative Richardson. Yes. Representative Palmer for Representative Groen. Yes. Representative Rodishan for Representative Silva. Yes. Representative William Smith is not here. Is anybody sitting in for him? Weiler? Weiler. Weiler votes yes. Weiler voting for Representative William Smith oh. votes aye, uh, yes. For Representative Swinford, Representative Carol McGuire. Yes. Representative Bowers is not here and no one sitting in for him. Uh, Representative Sandra Keynes. No. no. Representative David Pierce. No. Representative Rosenwald is sitting in for Representative Weber. No. And Representative Perry. No. So the motion passes with, oh, Representative Bates? Yes. So the motion passes with five opposed, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven in favor, is that correct? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven, what? Who? Palmer? Yeah, he has. So the motion passes eleven to five. Representative Rowe gets to write the majority report. Um, Anyone object to consent? I certainly object to consent. Is there going to be a minority report? <laughs> minority report? Representative yeah. Keynes will get the minority report. Okay, well, that's it. So uh, our executive session is closed. We obviously won't have one.